2024 Excel Energy Center in St. Paul. We're on the rink live. We're happy to be joined by the head coach of the Robert Morris Colonials, Derek Schooley. First, I've got to say, welcome back. Well, we, last year at this time, you didn't have a team. This year, I uh, saw you play a couple games. Well, at this time, we were like, I couldn't wait for the game to get over, so it was, we were on the clock. Right. Now I'm on the clock for year two. Just, uh, you know, how did it go? I mean, you're, you, we've joked about it, but you're the only guy that started a program from scratch twice in uh, the same place. Um, how was the first year in, in kind of putting a team together? And let me ask you this. We're in a new world of college hockey with the transfer portal and more kind of player availability. Is that an advantage or is that a disadvantage for a yes. program like yours? We don't have enough time, first of all. The game starts <laughs> in about an hour. So, yeah, you're right. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> we don't have enough time to go there. And you asked me about six different questions there, which we could be going for an hour. But... Um, First of all, the, our, our year was, was uh, it was everything we expected. Um, it was exhilarating, it was frustrating, it was a roller coaster, a lot of highs, a lot of lows, yep. but it was great to be back. It was great to get the, the brand of Robert Morris back. It was great to get our hockey program back. Uh, we opened up our program uh, in October with a uh, home opener that, that had so much emotion, so much passion so much excitement and so much thankfulness to be back. Yep. And then uh, we went, we gave up a goal in the first minute, and then the next night we went out and shut out Bowling Green on the road. And then uh, we were 500 through the first uh, month, and then November hit, and we hit rock bottom. Yep. And yep. we got better as December went on, and then... Um, I saw you, you in January, and, you know, and, you, you lost two games in Minnesota, but not not pushovers. And we we're, were playing well. We, that, that was kind of a turning point in our season, and we ended up winning 11 games. Big... Uh, playoff win where we went on the road against Bentley and won in overtime yep. and um, played our IT. We had, were really good to, for about 40 minutes in that game and the wheels kind of fell off the bus the rest of the series and then obviously you saw our IT in the, the regionals and they were a good hockey team. Good hockey team. Older, they, older team, you know, a lot of veterans, yeah. So, I mean, it, it was it was everything we expected. Like I said, a lot of roller coaster and uh, exhilarating, but uh, good to be back, uh, good to be uh, moving forward. We've got a young hockey team. We're returning 16 players. 14 of them are going to be sophomores. Okay. And then after that, we've got a lot of freshmen, and we're currently working the transfer portal. And then to answer your question, knock on wood, um, uh, it hasn't killed us yet. Uh, it was able to help us last year to, to bring in 10 guys that really helped our program. We had two really good goaltenders, and uh, we had some, some veterans that were our captains. We had re really deep blue line. We had two Minnesotans that that helped us uh, as far as uh, Mitch Andrus and Luke Johnson yep. that were uh, loved playing against the Gophers <laughs> and it was fun for them but um, it was good and uh, we just need to go out and get a couple more players and, and hopefully uh, sooner or later hopefully the transfer portal writes itself. Sure. Um, it's not going to go away. You have to figure out how to manage it. You have to figure out the world we're living in and you have to figure out what makes you successful within the world of the transfer portal. We are going to be young again next year. We've got a lot of, uh, we'll have a lot of sophomores and freshmen, but we will have some older uh, experience. And with that comes, uh, uh, hopefully we'll be better next year and continue to grow as a program. We're talking with Derek Schooley, head coach of the Robert Morris Colonials out of the Pittsburgh area. If I remember correctly, you were telling me last year's roster was a lot of young guys, a lot of old guys, and not really much in the middle. Correct. You know, how does that kind of write itself over time, I guess? Well, I think this year we'll, we'll be freshman, sophomore heavy. We'll get a couple more seniors and then we'll start trickling in that middle and that middle will, will as we get older um, we'll have 14 like I said sophomores but I don't know if we'll have 14 juniors and that's the the nature of the, the beast that we have and if yep. we do great because that means we keep that core together and uh, you win with older players so as many of those guys we can keep together and grow as a, a program that'll be good so we just have to figure out how we go and how we move forward and hopefully we can continue to do that. You talked about kind of the rebirth of your program. Just what was the level of excitement you know, on campus and in the hockey community in Pittsburgh? It had to be pretty, a pretty cool moment to be back on the ice. Well, I think everybody was a Colonial fan. I think everybody helped bring the program <laughs> back in some way or another. I think I, I've met so many people that helped donate to, to save the program. Everybody helped uh, do their part in saving the program. And everybody was a Colonial at heart on our first game. And uh, Bowling Green was our opponent. but. We had, a, we had a lot of people, especially the city of Pittsburgh, behind us. And uh, it, was, it was good to be back, and uh, we're just we're thankful. We had an attitude of gratitude as the season went on, and uh, I got on the plane to go play the Gophers. I'm like, what are we doing? And, uh, you know, the Gophers were hot at that time, and obviously they had a very good team, and um, we, we held their own. And it was 4-2 uh, the first night, 4-1 the next night, and 
Um, we had some, we had battles all year, and um, it just helped us get better, and it helped us prepare us for the playoffs, and um, it's going to help us prepare in the future. And um, I, it, it allowed me the two years off. While it was not great, it it it, it, it was terrible. It was terrible yeah, for yeah. our players. It was terrible for our staff. But it allowed me to do some other things, like be a member of the media, uh, be uh, kind of refresh and be revitalized. And I remember in November, I called Tom Sertori and uh, him and Bob and, and Frank, they're all good friends. And I, they always kept saying, hey, enjoy this time off, enjoy this time off. And I kept saying, no, I want to get back to coach. And then when we were in that swoon of November, I was like, ooh, I wish we could have some time off. <laughs> I wish I could go back to uh, recruiting and getting paid. And uh, but it was rewarding to be able to win that playoff game, and it was rewarding to, to see our players grow. And uh, like I said, uh, we've made a lot of fans along the way, and the, both in the media and in the, the general world. I, I walk through the corridor here, and they're like, Rob, Bobby Moe, and you, you just hear it. It's not like Welcome to Moe's, but it's Bobby Moe. Nice, nice. Well, now, we've been to Pittsburgh pretty recently. It was a weird frozen four because of COVID. There wasn't a full fan allotment. I think Pittsburgh's just a fantastic town, cool architecture, cool landscape, great food, you know, good sports town. But you go back to your roots. You're a St. Louis guy. We're going to be there next year. Are you going to be kind of the travel guide? Are you going to give us tips on where to go, what to see in, in St. Louis? Well, I mean, everybody, every, I was like the travel guide for the two hosts in, in Pittsburgh, and uh, I'm excited to go back to St. Louis next year and, and uh, see a lot of old friends, and obviously my parents still live there, so I'm excited to have the Frozen Four back there. And, and, uh, and then they, they got a Stanley Cup banner we can look at yeah, since the last and, time we were there. Yeah, and I was uh, I got a chance to go to one of the Stanley Cup games. Hopefully the Cardinals will be in town. i um, already been asked uh, about where to stay, Airbnbs. Uh, the, Saint, the folks from St. Louis were here uh, touring. I talked to Steve Chapman. I talked to some of the people at Enterprise Center working on uh, our uh, USCHO podcast location. Yep. Um, unbelievable party that they put on last night here. Hopefully find a good venue for for one, plus the hotels down there. So uh, I'm excited about that, excited about the venue going there, then going to Vegas, and we'll see. And hopefully Pittsburgh wants to get back on the docket again and wants to, uh, Holly uh, Perello from Visit Pittsburgh's here right now to, to try to get another uh, go at it, and hopefully uh, we get another opportunity because the last one, like you said, was a little... Different. A little different, you know. Yeah. Just, I mean, we still had a great time. And yep. We had some great food. I had a you know a sandwich with fries on it, which you got to do from Andy Brothers. Yeah, and, you know all of that stuff. And I will say, I was telling my daughter today on the drive in here, we got a beautiful day in St. Paul today. There was a day like that in Pittsburgh. I did about a four mile walk along the river and you know Diamond Point and all of that. I mean, just really a cool town. Well, it's good that we're not there right now because there got some massive flooding going on oh, and some rain. And um, but uh, no, it's a, it's a great town and. Uh, We've been excited to host two Frozen Fours there, and hopefully we can get a, get the opportunity to host a third one and uh, with a full full of venue. Because like I said we had a third of attendance, and uh, we were constantly doing uh, COVID tests and hoping. Because I was on the committee at that time, sure, sure. hoping that we could continue to play the games. We we're glad that we got every game in, and um, I think we were. I think we bumped into each other one night. At, uh, everything was closing at 10 o'clock, and. Uh, you, had to, you had to show your ID to get in all the places. The world we lived in then was, uh, you look back at it and go, wow. And, uh, you know, and, and, and by the way, being a lifelong Minnesotan and a Minnesota sports fan, there were three Minnesota teams among the four teams there, and none of them won it. And people said that was the most Minnesotan thing ever, you know, to, 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 be, to have three teams there and, and not come away with championship. Congratulations to UMass, their, their first title, and a, a pretty dominating performance by them in the title game. And now we're in Minnesota, and no Minnesota teams here. Right. So let me get your quick prediction. We've got Boston College and Denver tonight, two really, really solid teams. Denver's pretty deep. BC has got, I think, four number one draft picks. I mean, just uh, you know, a ton of talent on the ice. Well, we just were on uh, USCHO, and we uh, we were completely wrong all last year. Yep. And we just picked uh, a BCBU final. I was hedging. I said there was going to be an upset. I did. I couldn't go out on a limb and say Denver was going to beat BU. But I knew that 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 was going to happen. Uh, we went. Uh, we were all unanimous today that BC was going to win. Um, I said it was probably going to be 4 2. I thought uh, BC is going to get out to a, a lead and uh, then Denver will come back. Uh, it's been the kiss of death, though. So, so seeing that we all pick BC, it means Denver's going to win. When we saw what uh, BC could do when they play with a lead against Michigan, they really were, uh, were pretty dominant in that team. So, this should be a good one. Yeah, but uh, I would say that Michigan was, uh, Michigan was the better team. Uh, BC just scored. So, I, I, it'll be a really good hockey game. 
Um, I'm going to be interested to see. I keep saying if BC can get to get to three goals, I think that they're going to be the the uh, the favorite to win this hockey game. Derek Schooley, head coach of Robert Morris, thanks for joining us on the Thank Rink you. Live. Thank Jess you, Myers, we're at the Frozen Four in St. Paul. Lots more to come on the Rink Live.com. Thanks, Derek. Thank you.